Hello everybody, welcome back to Reading for Vocabulary. I'm Brian Stewart. We're going over Lesson 5 now. The title for Lesson 5 is Never a Warm Day. Never a Warm Day? Well, obviously, we're not talking about Korea because Korea has many warm days, right? That's good, right? We don't want to be cold all the time. But we're talking about a place that never has a warm day. So we're going to focus on, let's learn about the Arctic. In the Arctic, there's never a warm day. It's always cold. So we're talking about geography that falls under social studies. Well, first of all, let's talk about the Arctic. As you can see, it's very cold in the Arctic, right? Very cold. Never a warm day. It never gets very warm there. It's always covered with snow and ice. And the animals that live there are used to the cold weather in the Arctic. Okay, let's begin with our vocabulary. Whew, frost just jumped on up in there, right? A covering of ice. So when it's really cold outside, right? And you can see the plants or the grass, the trees are covered with a very thin covering of ice. We call that frost. Frost is on the grass. Frost is on the trees. Frost is on your windows sometimes, okay? So it's a thin covering of ice that covers things when it's very cold. Number two, wow, she's very, she must be a famous person, right? She looks like a famous singer. Liked by many people, of course I just gave you the answer, famous or popular. I said famous before, it's a synonym. It means the same thing, famous, popular. Many people like that person or thing. It is popular or it is famous. Okay. Number three. Now imagine if you lived here. Uh, this is your dog and you live at a home near here. The only way to get to your home is by boat. Wow. That is a far away place or remote. It is remote. Remote means far away or hard to get to, right? If you live in an island, you can't drive a car there, right? There's no roads. You have to take a boat. It's far away from a city. So it's hard to get to. It's remote. 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 Okay, next word. What is she doing? <laughs> it's very strange, isn't it? This woman is not common. She's not behaving in a normal, common way. It's not common. If it's not common, it's unusual. She's being very unusual here. Most people don't eat their keyboards. I don't recommend you to eat your keyboard. I don't recommend that as a good practice. So it's very unusual for someone to eat their keyboard. We can also use another word, maybe you've heard before, weird, <laughs> right? She's being weird, strange, unusual, okay? She's not common. Okay, next one. Uh, we have a nice picture here, okay, uh, of a fortune teller. To say that something will happen in the future. Now, the word I use to describe her, fortune teller. In Korea, this is kind of a popular thing, especially if you go to the old parks around in Seoul or some of the places. I think you say in Korean, chamjangi, right? Chamjangi saram. I don't know if you say saram. Say chamjangi, right? That is a fortune teller, someone who says what will happen in the future. Now, what do they do? What do fortune tellers do? What do chamjangi, what do they do? They predict predict, predict. They say what's going to happen in the future. Is it true? Well, you have to, you have to think about that, right? You have to judge for yourself. Can you predict the future? Okay, next one. To give off light. The sun, of course, gives off light. Light bulbs in our house give off light. What are they doing? They are shining to shine, shine, not sign, 
shine. S H. Shh. Don't not be quiet, but sh shine. To shine means to give off light. To give off light is to shine. Now, shine is an irregular verb, so we say shine, shone, shown. Shine, shone, shown to describe this verb in the past or this action in the past. Okay, number seven. Oh my gosh, I feel sorry for him. He's very, very cold, isn't he? Oh my gosh, he looks like an ice cube. <laughs> He's extremely cold, very cold. Chincha chuayo, right? You say that chinchu or aju, aju chuayo, right? Uh, very cold. What do we say? There's another word, frigid. Frigid, frigid. If something is frigid, it's really, really cold. Go into your kitchen, open your freezer, stick your head inside. It's frigid. <laughs> Don't do that. Your mom will get angry. Okay? But it's very cold. Frigid. Eight. Something that is completely different. Something that's different. So some people say incinerator is good. Other people say incinerator, no thank you. We don't want it. So you have two sides. You have maybe a pro and a con. You have what other type of sides? You can say opposite. Opposite sides. These people are on the opposite side, right? Opposite, opposite, opposite. So if, if an argument, you know, you have some people saying it's good, another person saying it's bad, these are opposite sides. Okay. Number nine, a person who visits a place for pleasure. Where is this? This looks like it's in Venice, Italy. You can tell by the stripes on the uh, shirts, that's their trademark. Also, of course, they have the canals that go through the city. Looks like Venice. A person, but if you go to Venice and you go there to look around, wow, it's really cool. People get by on boats. Look at the buildings. Look at the, uh, the food. Let's, uh, let's experience a new place for pleasure, for entertainment. Then you call that person a tourist. You are a tourist if you go to these places for pleasure. To travel for pleasure, that is a tourist. Okay, next one. I'm sure you have some of these in your room, right? I hope you do, because books are good, right? And a book of stories for children, uh, we can call those what? A book of stories, we just use this word, and we use this word, and we put them together. And what do we have? We have a story book. So a storybook, of course, is a book of stories. It has a story or several stories in it. It's a storybook. Next one, an area of the earth. So an area of the earth, especially farmers, use this to grow crops. What do we call it? Of course, it's land. They need land to grow food. So an area of the earth is land. The area around the North Pole. Now, it's maybe a little hard to see, but if you look closely, you can start to recognize some of the shapes here. This is North America here. This is Greenland. <laughs> Greenland, it's not green, it's white. But we don't say white land, we say Greenland. <laughs> That's history. Okay, the Greenland. And then, of course, here we have the top of Asia. This is Russia around here. Korea's down over here, right? So what were we looking at? We're looking at the area around the North Pole. What do we call that area? There's a special word for it. We already talked about it. It's called the Arctic. Arctic. We don't say, really, we don't really pronounce that C. We don't say Arctic. <laughs> That's Himduro, right? We say Arctic. Arctic. We don't really pronounce the C. It's not Arctic. It's Arctic. Arctic. Okay, Arctic. That's the area around the North Pole. It's very cold up there. Next one. In the place of something or somebody. In the place of something or somebody. It's kind of a difficult word. It is instead. Instead of. Right? So, instead of cars, these people are riding bicycles. Right? And instead of bicycles, these people are riding cars. So, in the place of something or somebody. If you say, uh, not this one, but another thing. Instead of this, then that. Okay, next one. Number 14, what we ride over snow and ice. Now, in the Arctic, it's very cold. 
you can't really make a road because it snows too much. If you make a road, after a month, you can't see the road anymore because it's covered with snow. So people don't have cars. They use these things to move around. What are they called? They're called sleds, a sled. Maybe you have a sled. When it gets cold in the winter time, you might take a sled to the hill and ride down the sled for fun. A lot of kids do that. They ride a sled over snow. In the Arctic, they use dogs to pull the sled and that's how they get around because cars are not very useful in the Arctic or very cold areas. Sleds are better. The next one, a small round house made of snow. You've probably seen these before, right? And when it's very cold, people will make these out of ice. They'll make them out of snow. It's a little house, very interesting house, right? Chimney soil, right? How would you like to live there? Maybe a little bit cold, but it's actually warm inside. It's warmer inside than outside. What is it called? It's called an igloo. Igloo, right? An igloo is a house made of snow or ice in the Arctic or Antarctic. To sense sounds. Now, of course, we have many organs in our head that we use to know what's going on around us, right? When we use our eyes, we're seeing. When we use our mouth, our tongue, we're tasting. But when we use our ears, what are we doing? Then we are hearing. To hear is to sense sounds. Right now, you are listening to me. You are hearing the noises, the sounds that I'm making. It here is an irregular verb. Hear, heard, heard. So, uh, maybe you uh, heard me yesterday too, as also today. Maybe you're studying very hard, right? So here, heard, heard, we use heard to describe sensing sounds in the past. Okay, let's go for the reading, uh, the vocabulary exercises, sorry, the vocabulary exercises. We have several words here. We need to fill in the blanks. Very easy exercise, right? So we have our sentences. We need to use these words to complete each sentence. Let's go over the words. The first one is frost frost, then popular, popular, then unusual, unusual. Next one is shine, shine. Next one, frigid, frigid, f, frigid, right? Opposite, opposite. Next one, remote, remote. And the next one, predict predict okay so let's use these words figure out how we can put them into the sentences number one I got cold I got cold I became cold because of the beep weather what kind of weather makes you cold what kind of weather makes you cold probably this word is what we're looking for frigid very cold. Remember, frigid is very cold. So if the weather is very cold, you become cold. You will get cold. I got cold because of the frigid weather. Number two. Oh, by the way, it's interesting. This says I got cold. That just means you are not warm anymore. But if you add one little word and you put A, I got a cold, it's completely different. That means you got sick. I got a cold. Achoo, achoo, right? I got a cold. I became sick because of the frigid weather. But if you don't use A and you just say, I got cold, it just means your body was cold. You didn't get sick. You go inside, you get warm, no problem. So it's sometimes in English, it's very important whether you use A or no A changes the meaning. Okay, just a little note. Number two, after the heavy rain, so after it rained very heavily, after the heavy rain, the sun began to what? So after it rains, the clouds go away, you can see the sun, the sun begins to what? Give off light, it begins to shine, okay? So the sun began to shine after the heavy rain. Number three, the Arctic is a very beep place. 
Not many people go to the Arctic. It's very difficult to live there. Like I said before, you can't really build a road in the Arctic, so it's hard to get to the Arctic. A place that is hard to get to is remote. The Arctic is a very remote place. It's hard to get to. Number four, in winter his car window was covered with what? I talked about this when we talked about this word. When it's really cold outside, there will be a covering of ice on plants, on grass, on your windows. What do we call that ice? We call that ice frost. So in winter, his car window was covered with frost. Okay, number five. The beep of hot is cold. Interesting. Hot and cold, pandero, right? They are what? They are opposites. So the opposite of hot is cold, right? The opposite of happy is sad, right? The opposite of tall is short, okay? So the opposite of A is B, right? That's a good thing. Of course, A and B are opposites, pandero, okay? Number six, I can't beep the result of the match. The result of the match, match here means like game or contest. For example, a soccer match, right? Do you know who will win? Sometimes it's hard to tell. It's very difficult to know the future. So I can't, when you know the future, you, you probably don't know the future. Of course, it's very difficult to know the future. It's very difficult to know who will win the match, which team will win. So it's difficult to predict I can't predict the result of the match. I don't know. I can't tell the future. Okay. I'm not a chum jang yi. Right? Okay, next one. Number seven. He is a very beep singer in Korea. So we're looking for something that has to do with singer or entertainers or actors. Of course, if a singer is to be successful, many people have to like that person. So. If we're talking about somebody who is, many people like them, he is a very what? He's a very popular singer in Korea. And number eight, she is a girl with what ability? She is a girl with some type of ability. The only word left, of course, but also we're looking for something that uh, makes her unique, makes her different from other people. She's a girl with unusual ability. Of course, people with unusual ability, you know, could be a good thing. Uh, somebody who sings very well, that's not common, that's unusual. Somebody who has a very good voice. So somebody who has an unusual talent, they can become famous as an entertainer or even, or in many other fields, right? If you have an unusual ability to do math in your head, you can become a scientist or a teacher or a mathematician, right? So if you have an unusual ability, sometimes that's very good. It's not common. You should develop that ability. Okay, anyway, that wraps it up with the vocabulary. Let's take a short break now, and we'll take a look at the reading section in a few minutes. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Are you ready to learn more about the Arctic? Let's do so and read the reading. Let's go over the reading together and learn more about the Arctic, okay? First we have, imagine a faraway land with snow and ice all year long. In this remote place, every day is winter. You wake up each morning to the cold air and frost. Does this sound like the right place for you? If it does, then you should go to the Arctic. Maybe you've heard of the Arctic before. So this first part is introducing the place. The place, of course, is the Arctic. It's describing what the Arctic is like. And it starts off with a question. Imagine. Many articles about different places or different lands start off with imagine. Because it's like, pretend you are in that place. Pretend you are there. Imagine, right? In your mind, Pretend that you are in this place, a faraway land, a land that is far away. It has snow and ice all year long, so there's no summer, 
right? It's always snow and ice. In this remote place, every day is winter. There's no summer. There's always snow and ice. You wake up each morning to the cold air and frost. Can you imagine that? Every morning you wake up. Every morning it's cold outside. There's frost. You go outside and you're cold. Does that sound good to you? Does this sound like the right place for you? Does that sound like, hmm, I like that kind of place? Some people, maybe, some people like cold weather. You know, they don't like summer. They hate summer. Oh, it's too hot, right? I sweat too much. Maybe they want to be in the cold weather all year long. Does that sound right to you? If it does, if so, right? If it does, then you should go to the Arctic. If you like the sound of cold air and frost every morning, if you like that, it sounds like the right place. If that's true, then you should go to the Arctic. Maybe you've heard, maybe you've heard of the Arctic before. You probably have because there are many uh, stories about the Arctic. The Arctic is on television. It's on movies. You can read about it. In fact, storybooks say this is where Santa Claus lives. Do you know Santa Claus? Right? He's the, the man in the red suit, the white beard, red hat. He rides a sleigh with his reindeer. Storybooks say this is where Santa Claus lives. Santa Claus lives at the North Pole, according to many storybooks. But, but real people live there too. Not just Santa Claus, but real people like you and me. Okay? Now, I'm not saying anything about Santa Claus here, right? Okay? That's, I'm not saying whether he's real or not. That's something you have to find out from your parents, okay? But of course, Santa Claus will come and give you presents if you've been good children, okay? So, leave it there. Real people live there too in the Arctic, okay? There are schools, churches, and hospitals just like in your town. So this is saying that, you know, there are ordinary people living in the Arctic. They have similar things that you do. They have schools, they have churches, they have stores, hospitals, all sorts of things just like in your town. But not everything is the same. Sure, schools, churches, and hospitals might be the same, but not everything is the same, right? If you look at this, this is probably not the same as in your town, even though they have some similar things, houses, schools, churches, those are the same, but not everything is the same. Okay, then on some winter days, the sun doesn't shine, right? So we saw in the summer, the sun always shines, but on some winter days, the sun doesn't shine. If it does, it shines for only a few hours and it's not very bright. In the summer, it's the opposite. The sky is bright almost all the time. Why is that? What's going on? Well, if you think about it, if this is the Earth here, and I'm not a very good artist, right? Where is the North Pole? We say it's on the top of the Earth. Well, actually, the Earth moves, doesn't it? So if the North Pole is here sometimes, during the winter, let's say the sun is over here, right? This is the sun. I don't have much room. But this is the sun. Well, the sun is shining here on the North Pole, and the Earth is spinning. So these people would see it. But the Earth doesn't stay like this. The Earth moves, right? It moves like this away from the sun, and it moves towards the sun. In the winter, the North Pole is over here, right? It moves away from the sun. So on some winter days, the sun doesn't shine. The, the sun's rays don't touch the North Pole, so the sun doesn't shine. If it does, maybe you're over here in the North Pole, it just shines for a few hours, just a few hours. You can see the sun going around the horizon, the edge of the land in the sky. And it's not very bright. It looks like dawn or dusk for just a few hours, and then the sun goes away again. <laughs> it's cold and dark. In the summer, the, the earth moves, right? It moves 
the opposite direction. So in the summer, now the North Pole is over here. So you can see the sun will touch the North Pole all the time. In the summer, it's the opposite, Pandero situation. The sky is bright almost all the time. All the time, there's this sun in the sky. That could be very difficult, right? Okay, so that's what's going on because the earth is moving. That's why this is true. It's very interesting to think about. Okay, at night it gets a little dark, but even then you can still see the sun. Could you fall asleep with the sun still shining? The people in the Arctic do every summer. So that's kind of talking about what we just discussed, right? At night, it gets a little dark. It's a little dark, maybe, depending where you are. But even then, you can still see the sun because the sun is going around like this. It doesn't go over. It goes around the side of the land, but it's always there. You know, sometimes it goes up a little bit, depending on how far north you are, right? So the question is, could you, could you fall asleep when it's daylight outside? It would be very difficult, wouldn't it? No more him to know. Many people who go to the Arctic and try to stay there, like for vacation, like a tourist goes there and wants to spend a couple weeks there, they have a really hard time. They can't fall asleep. They put something on the window to block it so their room is dark. Otherwise, they have a real hard time trying to sleep. The people in the Arctic do every summer because they're used to it, right? They have to get used to it. It's the way they grew up, right? They lived there for a long time. They get used to it. Okay, it may be hard to believe. Oh, somewhat difficult to think about this. It's hard to believe, but the Arctic is a popular place to visit. About a million tourists go there each year. Most of them don't go because they like frigid weather. So, you know, it's a popular place to visit. We just talked about, look, it's very cold, right? Uh, it's frigid. Frost is covering everything every time you wake up. Sometimes there's no sun. Sometimes there's only sun. There's no muhimduro, right? Despite those facts, it's still a popular place to, to, to visit. That's hard to believe because there are many negative things about it. Why is it popular? Right? Well, first of all, how is it popular? About a million people, a million tourists go there each year. That's how popular it is. Now, why is it popular? The first sentence tells us why it, why it isn't popular. What's a reason why it isn't popular? It says most of them, most of them, the tourists, don't go there because they like frigid weather. So it, that's saying why it's not popular. It's saying that why are these people going there? It's not because they like cold weather. What is the true reason? The true reason is here. They go to see new and unusual things. Instead of cars, there are dogs pulling a sled with people. So, why do a million tourists go to the Arctic every year? It's not because they like cold weather. No, that's not the reason. The reason is to see new and unusual things. In the Arctic, it's interesting. It's different. Of course, tourists like to see that. They go somewhere and they want to see something different, something new. Ah, chamisoyo, right? And then there's an example of an unusual thing. Instead of cars, it's normal for us to see cars. We see cars every day on the street. But if we go to the Arctic, we won't see cars. That's new and unusual. Instead of cars, there are dogs pulling a sled with people like this. So that's unusual. People think, oh, chemisayo. So they like to go to the Arctic and see things like that, new and unusual things like this example. Also, some other things. You can also sleep in an igloo. Well, that sounds like fun, right? Before we saw the picture of the igloo, before we saw the picture of the igloo, and I asked, would you like to live in one? Maybe not live in one, but wouldn't it be fun to experience it? Sounds like fun. Go to sleep in, an, in, a, in a house made of ice or snow. That would be a good experience. So you can sleep in an igloo. 
go ice fishing, maybe even see a polar bear. So, are you thinking about going? If you are, then you should go soon. Okay, so this is one more unusual thing. This is another unusual thing, and this is a third unusual thing. So we have three examples on this part of things you can do, uh, new and unusual things. Before we saw, yeah, you can see people in sleds, that's one, uh, but then we have three more in this part. The first one, sleep in an igloo. Actually, I should put it over here, shouldn't I? Yeah. Sleep in an igloo, go ice fishing, and maybe even see a polar bear. Those are three examples of new and unusual things you can do in the Arctic. Those are reasons why people go to the Arctic, over a million people a year. So, are you thinking of going? Does it make you want to go? If you are thinking, if you are thinking about going, then you should go soon. Why? Is there some time limit? Well, during 2004 to 2006, a part of the Arctic as big as France melted. The climate is changing and becoming warmer. Some scientists predict that by 2060, all the ice will be gone. <gasps> wow, that's amazing. That's why you should go soon. The Arctic is melting. There's no land in the Arctic, you know, except on the edges, sure, we, talk, we, we saw Greenland, right? But in the North Pole, at the top, there's no land, it's just ice, always ice, always snow that people live on. If it gets too warm, it's all going to melt. All that will go away. So, during these two years, a part of the Arctic, a part, an area of that Arctic, as big as France. That's a huge area, right? France is a big country, but a part of the Arctic that is the same size as France. It doesn't mean, you know, the same shape and size as France broke off. No, it means probably the area around the edge that was the same uh, amount of area as France. What did it do? It melted. <laughs> it turned from snow and ice to water. Right now, before there was snow or ice you could walk on, now there's just water. The climate is changing and becoming warmer. So we, we know that the, uh, the climate of the earth is getting warmer uh, year by year, right? Decade by decade. Some scientists predict, they look into the future, and they think that by 2060, all the ice will be gone. If the earth continues to get warmer at the same rate, then all the ice in the Arctic will be gone. Okay, that's very interesting. That's why you should go soon. Okay, that comes back to the previous passage. That's why you need to go soon. If you don't go soon, it might be all gone. Okay, so let's go over the reading comprehension questions. This story is about what? What is this story about? What's the main subject of this story? A, a warm place. B, a nearby land. C, a cold place. D, a land where it never gets dark. Okay, what are we talking about? We're talking, of course, about the Arctic. This passage is about the Arctic. The Arctic is not one of our choices, so we need to choose one of the choices that describes the Arctic. What is the Arctic like? Is it a warm place? No, it's not warm in the Arctic. Is it a nearby land? Is it close by? No, the Arctic is remote. It's far away from most other cities or countries. Is the Arctic a cold place? Yes, it's very cold. It's frigid in the Arctic. So that's our answer. This story is about a cold place, the Arctic, right? It's about the Arctic. It's about a cold place. The Arctic is a cold place. So that's our answer. D, a land where it never gets dark? That's not right, because we read in the winter, it's always dark, okay? So, C is the correct answer. The Arctic is a cold place. This story is about the Arctic. The Arctic is a cold place. Okay, number two. Tourists go to the Arctic. Why? When we see tourists go to the Arctic, we have a verb. They go somewhere to. That's like because. To. Like because, oh, because is here, okay? And two. So these are reasons why 
people go to the Arctic. Remember in the passage, we talked about many different reasons. There were at least four reasons why people go to the Arctic. So tourists go to the Arctic to sleep with polar bears. Do you remember the passage said to see polar bears, not to sleep with polar bears. If you go to the Arctic to sleep with a polar bear, you are crazy. That's very dangerous. Polar bears can eat you. <laughs> so you should not try to go to sleep next to a polar bear. That's a very silly thing, right? So he wouldn't sleep. We go to see, you can see the polar bear from a car or far away, but don't get close to the polar bear. They're very dangerous. Okay, B. Tourists go to the Arctic to see people pulling a sled with dogs. Now be careful, you have, to, you have to understand exactly what this sentence means. You want to see people pulling a sled. Do people pull the sled along with dogs? Like I'm next to a dog and, and I'm pulling the sled and the dog is pulling the sled? No, people don't pull the sleds. The dogs pull the sleds with the people in them. So be careful because this says people pulling. People don't pull the sled. Dogs pull the sled. So that's wrong. C, because they like frigid weather. Tourists go to the Arctic because they like frigid weather. In the reading passage, it specifically said people don't go there because of the frigid weather, right? Most of them don't go because of the frigid weather. So that was directly said, no, that's not the reason. How about D, to see new and unusual things. Well, tourists go to the Arctic to see polar bears, to sleep in an igloo, to see dogs pulling a sled with people in them. Those are new and unusual things. So it, the answer is D. Because people go there to see all these things, those things are new and they are unusual. So tourists go to the Arctic to see new and unusual things. Okay, we're on question number three. During the Arctic winter, so what happens during the Arctic winter? We have four choices. A, the weather gets warmer. B, some days the sun doesn't shine. C, the sun is often eclipsed. And D, the, sun, the sky is bright and almost, oh, the sky is bright almost all the time. What is true? What happens during the Arctic winter? Remember the, uh, the little uh, diagram I showed you before, during the winter, if this is the Earth, sorry, I'm not a good artist, it's hard to draw a perfect circle, but during uh, the winter, if this is the North Pole, it's away from the sun, okay? So it's away from the sun. You're over here. So what happens during the winter? The weather gets warmer? No, because there's no sun, right? That's not right. During the Arctic winter, some days the sun doesn't shine. Ah, the sun doesn't shine because here is the North Pole. It's away from the sun. So B is the right answer. During the Arctic winter, some days the sun doesn't shine. That's true because of the position of the Earth and the sun. Now C, the sun is often eclipsed. Eclipsed? We talked about eclipses in a different lesson, right, uh, beforehand. But uh, we're not talking about eclipses in this passage. There's no mention of eclipses at all. So that's not right. D, the sky is bright almost all the time. No, the sun doesn't shine. Actually, D and B are kind of opposite, right? B, some days the sun doesn't shine. The sky is bright. That, those are opposites, right? So D is not true because we know B is true not the opposite situation. Okay, so during the Arctic winter, some days the sun doesn't shine because of the location of the North Pole and the sun. Okay, number four. Beep, the Arctic sky is almost always bright. This is kind of similar to question number three, right? This is saying when, when is the Arctic sky almost always bright, when? Well, we can do this very easily, right? We just saw that in winter, it's not almost always bright. It's, in fact, usually the sky is dark. The sun doesn't shine. So what's the opposite of winter? The opposite of winter, of course, is summer. So during the winter, no. 
during the summer. Ah, that's our answer, right? That's our answer. During the summer, the Arctic sky is almost always bright. It's just the opposite, really, of question number three. Not when tourists visit. <laughs> it's like, the tourists are coming. Let's turn on the sun. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> okay? Or at night. No, at night doesn't make sense either. The right answer, as we saw, is during the summer. Okay, and that brings us to the end of this lesson. So let's summarize what we've learned so far about the Arctic. First of all, we can see that every day is winter in the Arctic because every day it's cold. There's cold air and frost outside. There's always ice and snow. Ooh, every day it's cold. It's winter. We can also say on some winter days, when it's really winter, the sun doesn't shine. The sun doesn't shine on the North Pole, right, on some winter days. Imagine one or two months you don't see the sun at all. Some people, even those people who live in the Arctic, they don't like that. It's very himdro, okay? Next one. At night, it gets a little dark, but even then, you can still see the sun. That's during the summertime, right? At night it gets a little dark, but you can still see the sun. It's just along the side of the uh, horizon, okay? About a million tourists go there each year. So every year, a million tourists go to the Arctic. So it's unusual, right? Because why do they go there? It's a cold place. It's dark during the winter. It's always bright during the summer. Why do they go there? To see new and unusual things. There's lots of neat things you can see in the Arctic, and people like to see uh, strange or unusual things, and that's why people are tourists, because they want to have new experiences. So if you get a chance, maybe one day you will go to the Arctic. But don't forget, you got to go there soon before all the ice and snow melts. Okay, well that wraps up this lesson. We'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody.